Peace be with you. This is Ben Thompson with the Free Citizens of America. And today we're going to begin a special study of the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The reason I decided to start the study of the book of Jeremiah at this time is because the, the people in Jeremiah's day uh, share a lot of similarities with the people in our day. Now Jeremiah was called to to teach the people to return to the path that the Lord had established and they did not and the destruction of Jerusalem happened in Jeremiah's day so he was a, a witness to it. And in America, we are facing the same problem. Americans have rejected the prophets, just like the Jews have rejected the prophets. And the Lord is raising the warning voice through people he has inspired to speak. And if this people will not listen, then the the judgments that fell upon Jerusalem will fall upon America. And so we're going to begin, of course, in chapter 1 and go through that. And we will talk about passages that I feel prompted to do so. And, of course, we are using the King James Version of the Bible. So feel free to grab one and read along. The words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, of the priests that were in Anathoth in the land of Benjamin, to whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the thirteenth year of his reign. It came also in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah. Unto the end of the eleventh year of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, unto the carrying away of Jerusalem captive in the fifth month. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet to the nations. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. So here we have Jer the calling of Jeremiah, and apparently he was a, a young man or a child in those days. And... He didn't think the people would listen to him because of that. But this is to show the world that the Lord has more power than all the, the wise and old men. And for that reason, the Lord calls children or young people to positions of to prophesy because they are not as corrupted by the world as the older people. And it takes faith. And we can see the strength of the Lord through the youth. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? I said, I see a rod of an almond tree. Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast seen well, for I will hasten my word to perform it. And the word of the Lord came unto me the second time, saying, What seest thou? And I said, I see a seething pot. 
and the face thereof is toward the north. Then the Lord said unto me, Out of the north an evil shall break forth upon all the inhabitants of the land. For lo, I will call all the families of the kingdoms of the north, saith the Lord, and they shall come, and they shall set every one his throne at the entering of the gates of Jerusalem, and against all the walls thereof round about, and against all the cities of Judah. And I will utter my judgments against them, touching all their wickedness, who have forsaken me, and have burned incense unto other gods, and worshipped the works of their own hands. Thou, therefore, gird up thy loins, and arise, and speak unto them all that I command thee. Be not dismayed at their faces, lest I confound thee before them. For behold, I have made thee this day a defense city, and an iron pillar, and brazen walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, against the princes thereof, against the priests thereof, and against the people of the land. They shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee, for I am with thee, saith the Lord, to deliver thee. So we see here that the Lord has called Jeremiah, that he has the power within him to pull down nations and kingdoms. Now, do we have that power within us? Do we really have the power to be able to tear down nations and kingdoms? I believe we do. The only reason that it's not being done is because of the inhabitants of the land. Now, I think here the purpose of Jeremiah in, in the pulling down of nations and kingdoms was that Jeremiah spoke the word of the Lord to them so much and they had had so many warnings that those people were no longer justified. And so, the, because of that, the Lord enacted vengeance. And so we have a special purpose, and this goes for everybody listening to this. All of you hearing this, this becomes your responsibility as well. Or if you knew this before, it is also your responsibility. But it is everybody's responsibility to speak out against the wickedness that we see around us and it it's not about whether we are successful in preventing destruction it is about making sure that the people around us have been warned and that we ourselves are not to blame because we didn't do our best to warn them and that's what I'm trying to do every chance I get I warn about the coming desolation and why it will come. And let me give you my own witness again that I have seen by revelation that China and Russia and an alliance of nations will attack the United States and that the war will be so horrible that many people will die because of it within our own land. They will nuke places along the coastal areas and their goal will be to inhabit the central lands of the United States. And this war comes because of three reasons I have been told. First is because of the pride of our nation. We think we're we think we're better than everybody. We think we know more than the Lord. We think we're better than the Lord. We ignore we're too good for the Lord's word. And we are passing over even the people who claim to believe in the Lord are ignoring his own word. Second reason is because of the destruction of our family structures. The Lord has established our families, and that is the way we are supposed to do it, but our society is completely destroyed, family values and structure, and if we do not 
begin to return to the family structure that the Lord has appointed us, then his judgment will come upon us. And finally, number three, is because of all the bloodshed America is causing, both overseas and with our own land. Our soldiers are invading other nations, harming innocent women and children. Not necessarily from direct action either, just from the use of depleted uranium has caused untold havoc on children and women during pregnancy. And it's our fault. Count the number of abortions every day in America. Their blood is crying unto the Lord. And then finally, the third reason is our meat industry, which mass slaughters animals and tortures them their whole life from beginning to end is torture and they are crying unto the Lord and these are the three things that I have seen and the first judgment is war the second is famine and the third is a plague now continuing on in Jeremiah chapter 2, it says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Go and cry in the ears of Jerusalem, saying, Thus saith the Lord, I remember thee, the kindness of thy youth, the love of thine espousals, when thou wentest after me in the wilderness, in a land that was not sown. Israel was holiness unto the Lord, and the first fruits of his increase, all that devour him shall offend. Evil shall come upon them, saith the Lord. Hear ye the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob, and all the families of the house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, What iniquity have your fathers found in me, that they are gone far from me, and have walked after vanity, and are become vain? Neither said they, Where is the Lord that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, that led us through the wilderness, through a land of deserts and of pits, through a land of drought and of the shadow of death, through a land that no man passed through and where no man dwelt. And I brought you into a plentiful country to eat the fruit thereof and the goodness thereof. But when ye entered, ye defiled my land and made mine heritage an abomination. The priests said not, Where is the Lord? And they that handled the law knew me not. The pastors also transgressed against me, and the prophets prophesied by Baal, and walked after things that do not profit. So let's pause right there. So the Lord has tr problems with all manner of people, but specifically the priests and the pastors because it was their job to help keep the people in the right way, but they didn't do it. That's exactly what we are facing in America today. The priests and pastors have no understanding of the word of the Lord. And the only reason they preach is f for money. They tell the people good things, sweet things. They don't tell them the truth. Or they tell them a corrupted doctrine. And anything corrupted against the Lord is an abomination, and it is the same as if they were speaking in the name of Baal. Wherefore, I will yet plead with you, saith the Lord, and with your children's children will I plead. For pass over the isles of Chittim, and see, and send unto Kedar, and consider diligently, and see if there be such a thing. Hath a nation changed their gods, which are yet no gods? But my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. Be astonished, O ye heavens, at this, and be horribly afraid. Be very desolate, 
saith the Lord, for my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns, that can hold no water. So this is perfect. This is exactly repeating what I just said. The first thing that the Jews in Jerusalem at this time did was they reject they first rejected the Lord and his fountain of living waters, which is his gospel or his word or his law. And then they hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. What they did was create their own churches and synagogues after their own ideas and not in the manner that the Lord had established. Now these cisterns were broken and they're broken because they're not in the manner that the Lord has provided and therefore they can hold no living water. Now compare this to our day. We have all these different churches, all after their own patterns and designs. And they are not in the pattern that the Lord had established. You might not believe that, but when you actually compare the scriptures, and maybe I should make a list of what the Lord's church looks like, it is not similar to the pattern that the Lord has established in the New Testament. And because of that, all these little churches all over the place, they're like broken cisterns. They can't hold the living water because they don't have it. And so instead they're telling the people what the people want to hear instead of of uh, being able to give them what the Lord wants them to hear. Is Israel a servant? Is he a home-born slave? Why is he spoiled? The young lions roared upon him and yelled, and they made his land waste. His cities are burned without inhabitant. Also the children of Noph and Tahaphanes have broken the crown of thy head. Hast thou not procured this unto thyself, in that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God when he led thee by the way? And now, what hast thou to do in the way of Egypt, to drink the waters of Sahor? What hast thou to do in the way of Assyria, to drink the waters of the river? Thine own wickedness shall correct thee, and thy backsliding shall reprove thee. Know therefore, and see that it is an evil thing, and bitter, that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God, and that my fear is not in thee, saith the Lord of hosts. So, it doesn't matter where Israelites go, and it won't matter where Americans go, they won't be able to get the water of life anymore. Now, their own wickedness shall correct them. Now, why is that? Our wickedness creates a, a chaotic state. And all these wars and all these destructions that come upon them are the result of our wickedness. Now, all these, all these desolations that will come upon the United States, the purpose of it is to warn us and to help correct us and to get rid of people so that we are more likely to, on the other side of these events, be willing to return to the path that the Lord has established. For of old time I have broken thy yoke, and burst thy bands, and thou said, I will not transgress. When upon every high hill, and under every green tree, thou wanderest playing the harlot, So, and the, of course it's talking about Jerusalem, but we can compare it to America, because it implies, it, it applies here too. The beginning of our nation, the Lord freed us from the tyranny of, of monarchy, 
And we said, or our ancestor said, that we will not turn away from this path. But look what we have done. They're children. We have turned away from that path. And we have basically played the harlot like Jerusalem has done. Yet I had planted thee a noble vine, wholly a right seed. How then art thou turned into the degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me? For thou, though thou wash thee with nitre, and take thee much soap, yet thine iniquity is marked before me, saith the Lord God. How canst thou say, I am not polluted? I have not gone after Baalim. See thy way in the valley. Know what thou hast done. Thou art a swift dromedary traversing her ways. So, of course, Jerusalem denies her idolatry, her abandoning of the Torah. America denies her idolatry and abandoning of the Torah. Now, in the ancient days, they worship stone statues. Americans don't do that. They worship money and jobs and objects, other objects. They'll worship everything else, but they won't worship stone idols like they did in the old days. But it's the same thing. In, in Hebrew, the word idol means a worthless thing. And so when we pay attention to these worthless things, it's the same as idolatry in Hebrew. A wild ass used to the wilderness that snuffeth up the wind at her pleasure. In her occasion, who can turn her away? All they that seek her will not weary themselves. In her month they shall not find they, they shall find her. Withhold thy foot from being unshod, and thy throat from thirst, but thou saidest there is no hope. No, for I have loved strangers, and after them will I go. So here's another thing. You have some people, they lose their hope, and they say, well, there's no point because we're too deep into this. We can't turn back. And so we might as well keep going on this path. Well, that The Lord here is announcing that's a false idea. No matter how far we are along this course, we all have the ability to turn back by returning to the way that the Lord has established. Now, whether, again, like I said, whether we're successful or not, that's not the point. The point is, are you yourself doing what the Lord wants to be done? It doesn't matter what other people are doing. If you are doing what the Lord wants you to be done, then you, whether or not you live or not, it doesn't matter because you will be saved through the Lord. But I will remind you that if you are aware, then it is your responsibility to warn others. As the thief is ashamed when he is found, so is the house of Israel ashamed. They, their kings, their princes, and their priests, and their prophets, saying to a stock, Thou art my father, and to a stone thou hast brought me forth. For they have turned their back unto me, and not their face. But in the time of their trouble they will say, Arise, and save us. But where are thy gods, that thou hast made thee? Let them arise, if they can save thee in the time of thy trouble. For according to the number of thy cities are thy gods, O Judah. Wherefore will ye plead with me? Ye all have transgressed against me, saith the Lord. In vain have I smitten your children. They received no correction. Your own sword hath devoured your prophets like a destroying lion. O generation, see ye the word of the Lord. Have I been a wilderness unto Israel, a land of darkness? Wherefore, say my people, we are lords. We will come no more unto thee. 
Can a maid forget her ornaments or a bride her attire? Yet my people have forgotten me days without number. Why trimmest thou thy ways to seek love? Therefore hast thou also taught the wicked ones thy ways. Also in thy skirts is found the blood of the souls of the poor innocents. I have not found it by secret search, but upon all these. Yet thou sayest, because I am innocent, surely his anger shall turn from me. Behold, I will plead with thee, because thou sayest I have not sinned. So here we have two things already that the people are ignoring. Well, three things. The first thing is what he compares to the ornaments for a maid and the attire for a bride. These are the things that the Torah applies and that there's things that the Israelites were supposed to be doing, but they stopped doing it. And so it is like Israel as the bride not doing these things and so the Lord is saying hey your bride shouldn't you be wearing your bridal attire and then the next thing he says why trimmest thou thy ways to seek love so is this a a teaching that they were overlooking certain things for the sake of love, or should I say lust? And then they, f and then the Lord found the blood of the souls of the poor innocents. Could this be a form of slave labor? Compare it, let's compare it to our day. Americans can buy lots and lots of cheap, go cheap goods from China. But at what cost? They're all communist slaves making horrible wages and they're abused. But yet Americans don't care because they get their cheap goods. Then, of course, the Lord would say the people would, would proclaim that they're innocent of all this. And he says, no, you're not innocent. Why gaddest thou about so much to change thy way? Thou also shalt be ashamed of Egypt as thou wast ashamed of Assyria. Yea, thou shalt go forth from him and thine hands upon thine head. For the Lord hath rejected thy confidences and thou shalt not prosper in them. That's the end of chapter 2. Let's keep going because the thought hasn't stopped yet. They say, if a man put away his wife and she go from him and become another man's, shall he return unto her again? Shall not that land be greatly polluted? But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers, yet return again to me, saith the Lord. So in the Torah, it says that if you get divorced, you can't get remarried. But the Lord here is saying, even though that is the case, and that your land has become greatly defiled because of this, the Lord wants us to return to him anyway. Lift up thine eyes unto the high places, and see where thou hast not been lean with. In the ways hast thou sat for them, as the Arabian in the wilderness, and thou hast polluted the land with thy whoredoms and with thy wickedness. Therefore the showers have been withholden, and there hath been no latter rain, and thou hast a whore's forehead. Thou refusest to be ashamed. Wilt thou not from this time cry unto me, My father, thou art the guide of my youth? Will he reserve his anger forever? Will he keep it to the end? 
Behold, thou hast spoken and done evil things as thou couldst. The Lord said also unto me in the days of Josiah the king, Hast thou seen that which backsliding Israel hath done? She is gone up upon every high mountain and under every green tree, and there hath played the harlot. I said, After she had done all these things, turn thou unto me. But she returned not, and her treacherous sister Judah saw it. And I saw when for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I had put her away, and given her a bill of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. And it came to pass, through the lightness of her whoredom, that she defiled the land, and committed adultery with stones and with stocks. And yet, for all this, her treacherous sister Judah hath not turned unto me with her whole heart, but feignedly, saith the Lord. That means they... They 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 turned to the Lord, but it was a, in a fake way. It wasn't real. So they were they were mixing the Lord's way with idolatrous ways. And the Lord said unto me, The backsliding Israel hath justified herself more than treacherous Judah. Go and proclaim these words toward the north, and say, Return thou backsliding Israel, saith the Lord. And I will not cause mine anger to fall upon you, for I am merciful, saith the Lord, and I will not keep anger forever. Only acknowledge thine iniquity, that thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God, and hast scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree, and ye have not obeyed my voice, saith the Lord. So here the Lord wants Israel to acknowledge that she sinned. And, of course, we have to do the same thing. We have to acknowledge where we are sinning and what we are doing. And then we have to stop doing that and return to the Lord. Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. And I will give you pastures according to mine heart, which shall feed you with, un with knowledge and understanding. And it shall come to pass when ye be multiplied and increased in the land. In those days, saith the Lord, they shall say no more, the ark of the covenant of the Lord, neither shall it come to mind, neither shall they remember it, neither shall they visit it, neither shall that be done any more. At that time they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord, and all the nations shall be gathered unto it, to the name of the Lord, to Jerusalem. Neither shall they walk any more after the imagination of their own heart, evil hearts. In those days the house of Judah shall walk before the house of Israel, and they shall come together out of the land of the north, to the land that I have given for an inheritance unto your fathers. But I said, How shall I put thee among the children, and give thee a pleasant land, a goodly heritage of the hosts of nations? And I said, Thou shalt call me my father, and shalt not turn away from me. Surely as a wife treacherously departeth from her husband, so have ye dealt treacherously with me, O house of Israel, saith the Lord. A voice was heard upon the high places, weeping and supplications of the children of Israel, for they have perverted their way and they have forgotten the Lord their God. Return ye backsliding children, and I will heal your backslidings. Behold, we come unto thee, for thou art the Lord for thou art the Lord our God. Truly in vain is salvation hoped for from the hills and from the multitude of mountains. Truly in the Lord our God is the salvation of Israel. For shame hath devoured the labor of our fathers from our youth, their flocks and their herds, their sons and their daughters. We lie down in shame, and our confusion covereth us, for we have sinned against the Lord, our God. We and our fathers, from our youth, even unto this day, have not obeyed the voice of the Lord, our God. Now, we'll go ahead and pause there. I think that's a good place to stop. 
Now, imagine this. Israel is the Lord's covenant people. Israel and, and the Jews. And the Lord withheld as long as he could. But it came to the point where the Lord could no longer withhold. And he brought desolation upon them because of their own actions. Now, if the Lord did that to his own covenant people, the people who he promised to love and be over forever as long as they acknowledge him as God, what will the Lord do to those who he has replaced him with, the Gentiles, who have done the exact same thing that the house of Israel has done? If the Lord brought so much devastation upon his own people, how much more will he bring upon the people who he chose after Israel, the Gentiles? Then, when the Gentiles have proven that they will no longer keep the way of the Lord, and when we see these three desolations come upon the United States, then we can know that that is that time has come. Then the Lord will look upon Israel again and see that she will now listen to where she ignored in the earlier days. I leave that with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.